Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube? This is SDL0320 representing JVS. And I'm back for a brand new movie review. This is an early screen for the movie Kobu. And <laughs> I gotta say, it's actually a pretty wild ride. Um, I'm about to go into a non spoiler review. Oh, and before I do, I want to show you this quick small snippet. Alicia, she just um, went to the movie look at with me. She had a pretty good time, but you know what? Hey, Alicia! Hey, can you come join me? Come on, babe. Do I have to? Yeah, come on. Okay. I was like, I gotta bring the real version here. That wasn't good enough. <laughs> Thanks, son. Mm -hmm. All right, so we about to go and do this review for Kobu, the two strings. Um, it was stop animation for so the same folks that did the movie Coraline and a lot of other notable ones. Um, do you remember James and the Giant Peach? Yes. That was stop animation. Do you remember okay. Nightmare on Elm Street or Nightmare Before Christmas by Tim Burton? It was like yes. Jack Skellington. Mm -hmm. That was stop motion. So this is to me the next step up, if not the best stop motion that I think I've seen in years. I think the last one they did was the Little Trolls movie, which I never looked at that one. Um, but this one was really good. Um, but let's go ahead and go into it. So as far as the visuals and as far as what they had to do as far as immersion, I think that they bridged a really fine line uh, from stop motion for me because taking place in the setting that was in and having character Kobu and um, the other things that he creates with the paper, I think I've never seen stop motion like this. I think that the visual effects were amazing. What was one of the things that stood out for you as far as when you were watching it? Because we watched it in 3D. We didn't know we were watching 3D. But what was one of the things that stood out for you? Um, I think the, the, the little paper things. Mm -hmm. How like in an instant it would turn into something and it would go back. Like I think that continuous back and forth and back and forth was really, really cool. Yeah. Like that, I think the, the way he was able to like manipulate the papers was like yeah. awesome. Yeah, and that's the thing, like we looked at the very end of the movie and I was showing her how stop motion actually works. Mm -hmm. For each one of those pieces of paper to be able to do what they were doing, like how, how much work <laughs> went into that? Because, I mean, you can make a little origami, you know, but unfolding it to the finest nudge and then having it manipulated and then Kobu and his family are a part of an interesting part of magic and it's brought up through like his little banjo and even different things that happen throughout the movie but like magic in this is like really well done like I think that I haven't seen anything like this from stop motion honestly and so for me that right there is a 10 out of 10 but even like the soundtrack I thought that each time that there was a score that happened or each time there was a really somber moment like, I think it hit those feels right when it needed to. Like, even when the funny parts, I was like, this doesn't seem forced. This feels like they've been working on this movie for years. I'm curious to see how long it actually really took them. Um, but it was funny, though. So, segue to the, um, the acting. Um, I was asking, like, who's this Beatle guy? You know, who's this, this random dude that they meet on? This? I was like, who's this voice? And she picked him out randomly. And I was like, how did you know that? And I didn't see the very beginning where they had like the whole entire cast and stuff like that. But what did you think about the cast, babe, um, of different people over there? I think it was, um, let's see, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey was hilarious. <laughs> I think the playing the role of the Beatles was really cool. I think yeah. he did that. I think Charlie Theron was really good too. Oh, like, the monkey. Slat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was really, really good. I, I, I also think like how stoic the aunties were. Oh, the, yeah. Like, they were really good because they were legit. Like, they had that stoic, like, creepy feel to them. I thought that was really good. Yeah, like, I could see some kids getting scared from the sisters. And actually, uh, Rooney Mara, she plays both of the sisters because they're twin sisters. And I think they did a really good job for that visually as well because okay. I was like, babe, don't get scared. Don't look. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're right. I think they did a really good job, too. Um, Ralph Fiennes was the Moon King. And who plays the, the little boy? Uh, his name is Art uh, Parkinson. He was really good. I think I like the way they started the movie. Because the movie starts with him saying, like, don't blink. Or if you're going to blink, blink now. Like, mm -hmm. the movie starts off, like, it, just, it, it catches you. From the very start, I'm yeah. like, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, and it, it takes you and it runs you with it because 
the thing that I wrote, they gave us like a little surveys of what to write. And I think that the story and the visuals were so deep and with depth and with heart and with detail. I was like, they spent a long time making this. And it was like, I'm so appreciative of the craft in this. I was, I was sitting there watching it at some point. I was like, this is getting on that Lion King kind of level as far as like a story, as far as like something that can be, that can last the test of time because I haven't seen anything quite like it. What do you think about the story, babe? Um, I thought the story was really good. I think it hit some really good like, key points and definitely lots of things to learn, like takeaways for definitely takeaways for kids oh yeah like the importance of family like i thought that was a nice little undertone like the importance of family yeah and you know like simple things like eating together spending time together like the importance of that um and then i think then at the end like thinking about what makes a happy ending yeah what is needed for the story to have an ending and i think just the, the thought of the storytelling mm -hmm. that's also a theme throughout the entire movie like that was like that was his thing. Like, yeah, he was a great storyteller. So for him to be in the midst of a story as a storyteller was very interesting. It was like a story in the story that makes sense. Like, yeah, like uh, Kobu's got some amazing gifts, and I think the thing for me is like when I think about what he goes through in this movie, it's a lot. Um, like kind of to touch on what she was saying, like life lessons, like fatherlessness, um, abandonment, obedience. Um, yeah, um, trying to even deal with stuff that people that are a little bit more mature, mm -hmm. like life lessons of how you deal with your parents at a certain age, like it, some of the things that Kobu has to go through in this movie, I was like, everybody can pick something from what this man or this boy mm -hmm. is going through. And the thing about his character, he's got so much zeal, like he's had so much taking away from him that he's the kind of character that you would expect him to just, you know, in an instant, like, he's going to break. And he's just something else, man. And it's something to aspire to. Like, it's very inspirational. It's very gratifying from a heart value. And um, just seeing him as a kid. Like, I mean, I, a lot of times we'll talk about childlike faith. Like, the belief and understanding and comprehension that anything is possible. Mm -hmm. um, and this kid's got it, but he's got like courage and he's got like lovability and like even in spite of the things that he's lost. Like, I mean, one of the biggest things you can see, he doesn't have an eye. Yeah. Like the kid doesn't even, know, you know, especially when you find out how he lost his eye. Yeah. It's like anybody would be damaged from that. And in the midst of that, he was still a silly little kid that did silly little kid things. Yeah. So yeah. that was kind of cool. Like to, he kept that childlikeness. Yeah. Cause that was, I think that was the big turn about the Moon King of bringing his character to this place of being very cold and I don't know I, I really enjoyed it like it, it was really good as a really good message it's not the happiest of endings necessarily but it's definitely very gratifying and like you you shouldn't miss this movie I, like at all we highly recommend it Absolutely. uh we give it for a rating babe you know what um I would actually give it a 10. wow she don't give us <laughs> Just because, you know, the movie was great, like, I liked that there were lessons to be learned, like, we laughed, there were parts that were kind of like, dang, but it was just a really overall great film, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And just, like, even in the screening, like, seeing the range of people that were there and the range of people that it touched, like, you saw little kids, because they still on summer break, you saw older people, like, yeah, you, you really did. it was, like, the movie theater... The experience was like this film was good for everyone. Like, yeah. like people were all ages, and yeah. like it was just it was cool. It was one of those movies that anyone could see. Yeah, and that's the thing about like the audience, like the immersion for everybody. Like people weren't just like like they literally were soaking it in. Mm -hmm. Like they were taking it in. And the thing that was even crazier for me, we had this conversation about like like talking about reviews and stuff like that. People went and stood in line to write about right, what yeah. they thought about the movie. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself tells you mm -hmm. this got real substance to it. And that's the thing I think for me, like there were moments that were just nothing was really happening. Like there wasn't any action beats. It was just real dialogue mm -hmm. that have real <sighs> substance, meaning and things that were kind of edifying to really understand and comprehend. Right. Now as far as the 
the theology and the perspective of some of the things that some of the characters have. I don't necessarily agree with it all, um, but I can truly appreciate the devotion to what they were doing as far as just craft and I don't know, like this is one you just can't miss. I think I'm gonna give this one a 10 as well with my lady. So, um, hopefully y'all enjoyed our review for Kofu. Um, the two strings keep it locked. Uh, JVS, we ain't gonna stop because I can't find the remote. <laughs> but y'all have a blessed one. No stopping. Peace.